Hello again. I hope your day is going well. Mine's not doing too badly. Today's lesson we're going to talk about percentages. Actually we're going to talk about percentages for the next couple of lessons and today we're just going to work on the basics. What does a percentage mean and what's its relationship to fractions and decimals? So you've got your guided notes ready and a pencil so let's begin. The first thing we want to do is talk about the meaning of the word percent. The first part here, per, you've seen before. We've had this in units like miles per gallon and you know that per means to divide and the same thing is true here. Per means divided by. Cent, just like there are 100 cents in a dollar, means 100. So percent quite literally tells us that we are dividing by 100. Some people like to say that this means out of 100 and that's perfectly fine also. What this means for us is that whenever you see a percentage, x percent, it's a fraction. It means x divided by 100. One important percentage that we're going to use over and over again is 100%. If we use the definition, 100% means 100 divided by 100. So it takes 100 pieces to make a whole and we have all 100 of them. You know from your study of fractions that 100 over 100 is equal to 1. If you had 100% of something, you would have the whole thing. All right when we are looking at a sentence that contains a percentage, it's important for us to be able to translate and understand what that percentage is telling us. According to a recent poll, 53% of Americans support raising the minimum wage. 53% means 53 out of, oops, out of, And not exactly 100 here, but out of every 100. We don't know how many people they talked to. Maybe it was more than 100. We certainly have more than 100 Americans. So it's not just 53 people and it's not just 100 people, but 53 out of every 100 Americans support raising the minimum wage. Okay, now we know that percentages can be written as fractions. We learned a long time ago that fractions can be written as decimals, and of course decimals can be written as fractions. There is quite the link here between percentage, decimal, and fraction. I'm going to start by scrolling down to the bottom of our page and talking about how to convert from a decimal to a percentage. To begin with, we're going to do this in uh, some detail so you can watch some patterns emerge. If we had 89%, we could write this as 89 over 100. If you were to do the division on your calculator, 89 divided by 100 is 0 0.89. Or, of course, if you read this formally, this would be 89 hundredths, exactly the fraction that we have over here. Now, what we want to do is pay attention to what happens from the percentage when we convert it to the decimal without writing the fraction in between. You'll notice that the digits in each version are exactly the same. We have an 8, we have a 9, but dividing by 100 moves the decimal point two spaces to the left. It might be nicer if we look at this next one. 4.1% means 4.1 divided by 100. Go ahead, get your calculator and try this. Your calculator will tell you that 4.1 divided by 100 is 0 0.041. The decimal point used to be here between the 4 and the 1, and now it's over here. It moved two spaces to the left, and that's the effect that dividing by 100 has on a number. When you divide something by 100, the decimal point moves 
two spaces to the left. So your job is to pause the recording here and see if you can't fill out the next set of conversions. Write each percentage as a fraction as something over 100 and then rewrite it as a decimal. And if you want, use your calculator to do the division to make sure your decimal is correct. Come back when you're done. Two hundred thirty-eight point nine percent can be written as two hundred thirty-eight point nine over a hundred, and when the division is done, we get two point three eight nine. Again, the decimal point moved two spaces to the left. Sixty-seven percent should look very familiar. Um, at least it should have similar format to the first one we did. Just like eighty-nine percent, sixty-seven percent is sixty-seven divided by a hundred and it won't surprise us at all that its decimal form is 0 0.67. And then of course with 15.3%, that's 15.3 divided by 100, and that turns out to be 0 0.153. So what we want to notice is that in order to go from a percentage to a decimal, the decimal point moves two spaces to the left and the percent symbol goes away because percent means divide by 100. Once you divide by 100, you don't need the percent symbol to tell you to do it anymore. All right, let's take a peek on the next page. What we want to do is be able to go from a percentage to a decimal and from a decimal to a percentage. Let's start down here. We just went from a percentage to a decimal. The first thing that we do is move the decimal two spaces left and then we remove the percent symbol to reverse this process we would need to undo everything we just did if we want to go from a decimal to a percentage, it should make sense to you that we want to move the decimal two spaces. But this time we'll move it two spaces to the right. And then of course we will include a percent symbol. So if I scroll back up here a little bit, let's see if we can watch this happening in the table we had. There we go. If we were going to go from a decimal to a percentage, notice how the decimal point went to the right, 15.3, and then we use that percent symbol. So we should be able to look there, let's try that, at the difference between this answer and this answer and get from one to the other. All right, let's give that a try. We want to convert a decimal to a percentage. Now my little chart up above has disappeared, but of course you can still see yours. A lot of people get mixed up. Am I supposed to move the decimal to the right? Am I supposed to move the decimal to the left? If you think about an alphabet, D, is to the left of P in the alphabet line. So if you're going to go from a percentage to a decimal, here, let's look at this. There we go. Right. D comes before P in the alphabet. To move from a decimal to a percentage, the decimal point goes to the right. To go from a percentage to a decimal, you're going backwards through the alphabet, the decimal goes to the left. All right, let's give this a shot. 0 0.078, we want to make a percentage. So 0 0.078, we need to move this decimal point two spaces to the right. This should give us 7.8. Now we're not done. 
clearly 0 0.078 and 7.8 are not the same. You've got to remember to put that percent symbol in there so that the values stay equivalent. If you had 0 0.236 and we move that decimal point two spaces to the right, we would have 23.6%. So your job, pause the recording and try the next two. Come back when you are done. There. Do your answers look like mine? I hope not. Well, yeah, I did them wrong. I didn't finish them. 5.4 is not the same as 540. You know that. Don't forget to put your percent symbol in. And of course, the same is true for this one. Let's go the other way. If we want to go from a percentage to a decimal, our job is to drop the percent symbol and move the decimal point two spaces to the left. So we have 57.6, moving that decimal point two spaces to the left, to the left, to the left. Yep, there's our Beyonce moment there. And, oh, come on, that was funny. Anyway, here we go. 0 0.576 is the decimal equivalent for 57.6%. Here we have 0 0.023, moving the decimal two spaces to the left. Fill in that zero for a placeholder. There we go. So we have a decimal point, three zeros, and then the two and the three. Try the next two on your own and come back when you are done. How are you doing? Do your answers look like mine? They should this time. I didn't make any on purpose mistakes for you. Remember that 100% is equal to one. So it should make sense that 200% is equal to two and 230% should be 2.3. Next page. All right, now we get into some great stuff here. We know how to turn fractions into percentages, and, sorry, for percentages into decimals, decimals into percentages, and we already remember how to go from a fraction to a decimal and a decimal to a fraction, so we should be able to go from any form to any one of the others. You might remember that a quarter is equal to 0.25, and now you know that 0.25 can be written as 25%. So we have ways to represent any quantity in three different forms. We can work a fraction, we can work with a decimal, or we can work with a percentage. Do you remember how to convert a fraction to a decimal? We want to divide. Which way? Divide the numerator. by the denominator. If you want to convert a decimal to a fraction, you'll remember that we did this before. And the first thing we wanted to do is read the decimal properly. And by that, we mean not to say the word point. When you read it properly, you hear the place value denominator name. Because we say things like 7 tenths or 83 hundredths. And when you have that place value denominator, you know exactly which fraction to write. And of course, once you have a fraction down, um, we want to make sure that we check so that the fraction is in lowest terms. All right, we already know the rules for going from a decimal to a percent and from a percent to a decimal, so let's see what we can do here. In example four, we want to convert 7 twentieths to a percentage. Let's start by converting it to a decimal. 7 twentieths is 7 divided by 20. And if you did this on your calculator, your calculator would say 
7 twentieths is worth 0 0.35. All right, well now going to a percentage is easy. 0 0.35 is equal to, move the decimal point two spaces to the right, and include a percent symbol is equal to 35%. And there we go. If we want to write a percentage as a fraction, we'll do the same thing. We know how to write a percentage as a decimal, so we'll do that first and convert the decimal to a fraction. 27.4% is equal to, moving that decimal point two spaces left this time, 0 0.274. If we read this decimal properly, we would say that 0 0.274 is really 274 thousandths. And then of course we check to make sure it's in lowest terms, which this one is not. Remember with fractions that have place value denominators, all we really have to look for are common factors of two or five. So 274 thousandths isn't in lowest terms because both the numerator and the denominator have a common factor of 2. So let's see, 274 is 2 multiplied by 137, and 1000 is 2 times 500, and you're really good at canceling common factors by now, sorry, dividing out common factors, and you know the end result is 137, five hundredths. And there we go. The percentage has been written as a fraction. Pause the recording. You try letter B. Come back when you're done. Hopefully you wrote 5% as 0 0.05. And then you reread this. And instead of saying 0 0.05, you said, aha, this is five hundredths. Maybe you stopped here for a second and paused because you realized that 5% is actually 5 over 100. That's what 5% means. We could have gotten to this fraction a little faster, but there's nothing wrong with taking the decimal route first. Anyway, 5 hundredths is not in lowest terms. 5 is certainly 5 times 1, and 100 has a common factor of 5 also. 100 is 5 times 20. So when that common factor divides out, we are left with 1 20th. That's the fractional version of 5%. All right, see, it's not so bad. Let's flip to the next page. Just as you needed to know the decimal equivalents for some fractions, there are percentage equivalents that you should be familiar with as well. Let's see, one you already know is 100%, one half you should know as being 50%. If we came over here to the quarters, one quarter is 25%, and two quarters of course is 50% because it's the same as a half. Three quarters, well, when you think about money, right, that's 75 cents, this is 75%. And of course, if you had four quarters, that would be 100% because four fourths is worth one. Okay, um, one-fifth, this is 20%. If you didn't know that one-fifth was 0.2 before, you should know it now. Once we know that one-fifth is 20%, it's pretty easy to double this quantity and figure out that two-fifths is worth 40%, three-fifths is worth 60%, and four-fifths is worth 80%. You might remember that one-third is 0.3 repeating, 0.33333, so we're going to have to approximate this one, but usually we approximate it as 33.3%. And of course, two thirds becomes 66.6666667, right? And it all rounds up, so we can call this one 66.7% if we round it to the nearest tenth. One tenth is 10%, and you should be able to fill in the rest of the table to see that 2 tenths is 20% and 3 tenths is 30% and so on. But these are ones that you should just know. So if you don't already have them um, in your mind, maybe make some note cards and practice them a little bit. You'll remember that 100% of course is equal to 1. 
So if you had a percentage greater than 100%, it would convert to a decimal that is greater than 1. That only makes sense. And then when we write it as a fraction, we'll end up with a fraction that's larger than 1. And normally we write those as mixed numbers. So let's see what happens here with some percentages that are larger than 100%. If we wanted to write 135% as a fraction, like we did before, we'll convert this to a decimal. 135% becomes 1.35, moving that decimal point two spaces to the left and dropping the percent symbol. But of course, 1.35 is the same as 1 and 35 hundredths. There we go. Nice mixed number. Of course, we want to write 35 hundredths in lowest terms, so let's look at it separately. 35 one hundredths. We have a common factor of 5. 35 is 5 times 7. 100 is 5 times 20. And when the common factors cancel, we're left with 7 twentieths. So really, 1 and 35 hundredths is 1 and 7 twentieths. And our final answer is here. You try letter B. Pause the recording. Come back when you're done. As a decimal, 460% is 4.6. That gives us 4 and 6 tenths. And hopefully you saw the common factor and said, really, this is 4 and 3 fifths. And of course, if we scroll back up here a little bit and look at our chart, there we have it, 3 fifths, 60%. Or 6 tenths, where were we? There we are, 60%. So see, knowing those common fractions comes in handy. All right, the last thing we want to look at is a little strange, but sometimes you have fractions within percentages, and people get a little confused about what to do with this. So here we have 3 and 1 quarter percent. We'd like to write this as a decimal and as a fraction. And of course, you can't write a percentage as a decimal until you can move the decimal point, and you can't move the decimal point until you see it. So if we have 3 and 1 quarter percent, the first thing we're going to do is just focus here on the 3 and 1 quarter. We know that that's 3.25. Now we haven't done anything with the decimal point yet. We've just found it. So this is still a percentage. The percent still needs to stay. From there, we can write this as a decimal and move the decimal point two spaces to the left. It might help to estimate because you know that 3% is 0.03, 4% is 0.04, so 3 and a quarter percent should be 0.03 something. After that, writing it as a fraction is pretty easy. 0 0.325 is the same as 325 tenths, hundredths. Whoops, I did that badly, didn't I? It's not 0 0.325 put the decimal point where it belongs, over here, 0 0.0325 is 325 tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths. And of course that needs to be written in lowest terms. Clearly we can see there's a common factor of 5 there. We have 5 multiplied by 65 and 5 multiplied by 2000. The common factors of 5 are going to cancel, but we're not in lowest terms yet. 65 and 2,000 still have a factor of 5 in each one of them. 65 is 5 times 13. 2,000 is 5 times 400. Cancel that second common factor of 5, and we should be looking at 13 four hundredths. If you're not sure if you've done this right, take your calculator, divide 13 by 400, and make sure that the calculator says the result is 0 0.0325. Okay, so that's about it for now. Give your homework a good shot, and we'll see you in a little while for the next lesson. Have a great day. Bye-bye.